I just arrived at John Newcomb Tennis Ranch for round two. All right, I'm set up here at the retreat. It's the exact same event as last time, so this video will probably focus less on the event itself and more on just vlogging my progress. Um, so I've set up my Mirabilia for the first thing. She's what I've been working on lately. And this actually is probably a lot more progress than since the last time I showed her. I've done all of this teal part of her dress and I moved back on to stitching her skin. I did have some of this done. I was stitching it one over one full cross uh, and then I ripped it out because I wasn't happy with the way that the blended threads failed to show up using that method. So I've been using uh, two over one tent stitch uh, and I think it looks a lot better now. You can really see a lot of the shading uh, going on in her arms and hands. Of course the back stitch will make all of this show up a lot better. Uh, but I'm going to try and finish all of the skin on her face and we'll see if I can make good progress on that before lunch. I've also got a funny setup going on here because I forgot to bring my stubby legs that let my scroll frame sit on the table. So I've had to MacGyver a uh, makeshift solution. My sweet husband offered to meet me halfway with the stubby legs, but I told him, let's see if we can make this work. And then he doesn't have to make the drive from San Antonio to meet me. So, all right, I'll update you at lunchtime. I thought I would go ahead and show the method I've been using to do my two over one ten stitch. Um, all credit for this pattern of stitching goes to Leslie Lafleur of Under the Sea Fabrics. She taught it to me and I've been using it for the skin on this princess and I think it works really really well. Um, the reason why you want to do it this way is because you can have a problem sometimes when stitching over one thread where um, your floss will slide underneath the weave and not stay in the holes where you originally put it. And so using this method that Leslie taught me, uh, you can actually, your thread always goes over two on the back side, even though it's going over one on the front. And so because it's going over th two threads, uh, it will stay in the holes where you put it. So um, when you stitch over one, each stitch on the chart actually becomes four petite stitches, um, like one in each quadrant. So first I come up in the middle, uh, middle hole of the quadrant, and then I go down in the lower left. I usually stitch two-handed, so I'm going to be a little bit awkward doing this. Come up in the center, go down in the lower left, come up in the middle right, go down in the bottom. Now we're going to go over two threads and come up in the middle of the top. And then to the lower, re lower left of that, I guess that's the middle left. And finally the last stitch uh, in the top right and then back down to the middle. She actually taught me a reverse version of this, uh, but because the top legs of my regular X's go from top right to bottom left, I want the legs of my tent stitch to go the same direction as the top of my regular stitches. So I go top right to lower left, whereas she usually went top left to lower right. So. Um, So because I'm stitching top right to lower left, um, I'm working from left to right and from bottom to top uh, on my path.
pattern so that I never have to come up in a, a hole that already has a stitch in it so, uh, because that can really mess up your stitches and make them uh, sort of fuzzy and fray so it's better to go down and push the mess uh, further into the fabric um, rather than pulling it up so I'll just do that one more time up in the center down to the lower left Up on the right, down to the bottom middle. <laughs> Oops, caught a thread there. <laughs> Up in the middle, top. Down in the middle left. I do a much better job keeping my waist threads out when I'm stitching two handed. Up in the top right and then back down in the center. I'll insert a picture, uh, like a diagram of this method as well, in case this was difficult to see. So you can pause it and look at the diagram and hopefully follow the numbered instructions. And there you go. That was two sets of four ten stitches. <laughs> All right, it's been several hours. I think it's quarter to four in the afternoon, and the princess is finished, except for beads and back stitching. So I'm very pleased especially with how her skin looks. I also did her lips over one. I added that bit of green that you can see on the inside of her arm. I hadn't done that before. And I added in a couple stitches that I was missing on the back side of her dress down here. The gap here is going to be part of the bed frame and then the rest of these empty spaces are going to be filled with beads but that will happen at the end so beads and back stitching her face will look a lot more alive with back stitching but I'm really pleased with how the shading came out you can still tell um, what's arm and what's face so <laughs> i'm gonna move on to something else now um, be kind to animals which goes just here to the left i did this square keep our air clean at the last retreat and i'm gonna hopefully complete the full next one this time so i forgot to show my starting point but all i've done is these brown stitches here this will probably keep me busy till dinner time. It's dinner time. This is how far I've gotten. I'll pick up again after we eat. It's 1.25 a.m. I'm exhausted, but I finished my block on my Lizzie Kate green flippets. Um, now I'm gonna go to bed, but I'm not putting this away because in the morning I'm gonna rip out the K-I-N and then A-N-I and half of the M because they're one hole too high, which you can tell up here, the K is way too close to the B. So I know that that'll bother me, so I'll, I'll fix it tomorrow. It'll probably take me 15 or 20 minutes, but I'm too tired to do that tonight. So it'll wait till tomorrow. It's 10.30 a.m. I'm up, I've had breakfast, and I've frogged and restitched these few letters. So this block is finished. I think I'm gonna pull out my heaven and earth now and work on that for a good portion of the day. Here's where I'm at on my heaven and earth. I thought I would 
show you before I put it on the frame because I'm going to roll it up and then you'll only be able to see the part I'm working on. But I have three completed pages right now. I've got about 500 stitches up here, but then I skipped around and I moved down here. I worked on this uh, earlier in the year, but put it away to work on my Mirabilia. So um, I'm going to try and finish a fourth page right here, um, which is the shelf of shoes. Um, by April 7th, or whatever the deadline is for the Hade challenge on the Hade Facebook group. So that's what I'm going to work on now. I thought I'd show you the part of the photo I'm working on. It's going to be this page right here. It's going to be a fun one with the shoes. So that goes right here. So I told her about this trip. And I've got it all set up. Ready to stitch. It's been raining all weekend here at the John Newcomb Tennis Ranch. And today we got our reward for suffering through two days of rain. A beautiful rainbow. And there's actually a very faint second one up there as well. Just a perfect arch. I thought you guys might enjoy seeing that. My dorm room is that building just on the other side of the tennis courts on the right. <laughs> and then the room where we're stitching is over there through those red doors. So. It's Saturday night and all the fun stuff is happening right now or has happened. I told you last time how they hold a raffle and uh, silent auctions and last time I won stuff and bought stuff and felt very overwhelmed and the exact same thing happened again this time. So I'm going to really quick show you all the stuff I've obtained in the last 15 minutes, <laughs> which is a lot. So I guess I'll start with the silent auction because this stuff I actually paid for. Um, I won in the silent auction six mirabilias. I'll start with my favorite. This is the one that I wanted the most and so I bid on that one. Uh, this one actually came with most of the kit pieces. Uh, 32 count like dark chocolate brown linen as well as beads and krennic. This one is called Circle of Friends, and I think that's just so pretty. I got a mermaid. This one didn't come with any uh, of the materials, just the chart. But I haven't actually seen this one before, and I thought she's just so pretty. Uh, the South Seas Mermaid. This one, I love as well. I love the purples in her. She came with some of her materials, a fabric and two krennics. Uh, I don't feel any beads in there though, so I'll have to obtain those separately if I stitch her. This mermaid came with pretty much everything. An embellishment pack, a couple of water lilies, and fabric. Gypsy Mermaid. It's a very appropriate name. Oh, this picture stayed in the bag. There she is again. I also obtained August Peridot Fairy. 
I've seen a couple different people stitch this one. She's beautiful. She also came with her embellishment pack. Oh, all right. <laughs> Beads for her. And a treasure. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I'm hoping I won't kill it either. <laughs> and then finally, this one. Also came with water lilies, beads, and fabric. A little bit of everything. And this one is called Mermaid Undine. She's beautiful. Wow. Uh, yeah, so six mirabilias. And those, um, again, they were part of the auction, so I paid for those. And in the raffle, I won uh, a bush, <laughs> which is back here. It's a rose bush. Uh, if you know anything about flowers, this is called a double knockout rose. And it's supposed to be fairly easy, a fairly easy rose to care for, but it has needs like pruning and watering and uh, a sunny spot to grow. So I'm gonna try and do my best with that, but um, I am definitely only a beginner gardener. But I did put my raffle tickets in there um, in hopes that I would, I would win it, and I did. Uh, and then I also won a second raffle prize, which was this cup that says Stitchin' and Bitchin'. I think that's just hilarious. There's a couple of other ladies here who have a similar cup. One other that was in the raffle, but that one's pink with blue letters. I like the blue one better, that's why I entered for that one. Uh, and then along with that cup came an HEB gift card. So I actually am bringing my husband home some money in the form of this. <laughs> I didn't just spend, so <laughs> that's coming back. Um, I've made a little bit of progress on my heaven and earth. I'll show you back here. I've been working on a pair of purple shoes and my goal is to finish this pair of purple shoes tonight. It doesn't look like a lot, but it is, and I'll see if I can do it, but I'm pretty satisfied with that progress so far, especially given uh, how little stitching I actually did this afternoon. I did a lot of talking and walking around and looking at the silent auction stuff and laughing at people. And finally, uh, she's finally letting me put her on camera. <laughs> This is Trisha, the left-handed stitcher. Um, Having lots of fun. Yeah. Yep. We're roommates at the retreat this time. Not that we actually spend any time in the room. There's been very little time in the room, <laughs> mostly asleep. We've been sitting here together instead. Yep. Stitching on stuff. You want to show them what you're working on? I am working on my spring banner. Spring banner. Yep. You'll see the entire part that I've finished stitching in my update when I get home. Okay. <laughs> but I did finish the snowflake that I was working on. Oh, yes. She's going to pull it out. It's beautiful. It's very... Oh, okay. Excuse the mess at our table and the wine. I bought this wine because it has a frog on it. Haha. -ha. It's from Toad Hollow. I'm gonna try and get it to focus. There you go. It's a Chardonnay. Alright, and so I'm gonna show you. There's Trisha's snowflake. Ah, oh, gorgeous. You can see a little bit of the sparkle on the camera. Just enough. <laughs> She finished that the first day, before I even got here. Yep. That's how productive she was. Productive has gone down. <laughs> <laughs> well, Trisha only had the most meager start on this spring banner when she arrived. And she's done a lot. 
the door. I've got all of the second half done. Yes, the S, half of the S. Oh, yeah. Gonna show those guys. Adorable. You can see the whole thing on Trisha's video later. <laughs> I'll try to be done by the time the update comes around. You're well on your way. I think that's all for now. I'll probably check in again one more time later tonight. All right, it is 1.23 a.m. Made it about the same amount of time as last night. I did finish my purple shoes. And they look fabulous. And the room has emptied out. It's just Trisha and me left. And I'm about to bail on her. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Are you going to keep going for a while? Yep, I might finish this butterfly. So finish your butterfly. Just one more sleep. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, none of us believe you. a good enough place to stop for tonight. You'll got, uh, get a couple more hours of stitching in the morning before it's time to go. I think it's important to add that the Toad Hollow bottle is empty. <laughs> it, it, it was. I didn't share it. It was all me. But I had like 10 hours to do it. So... <laughs> I, I had a half a glass every hour for the entire afternoon and evening, so this can go in the trash now. It's Sunday morning. The room is clearing out. Most of the stitchers have left already. Trisha and I are still going strong. <laughs> We've probably got another 20 or 30 minutes only, though, before we have to pack up. It's 11. It's 11. It's after 11 now, and we're supposed to be gone at noon. Um, I didn't pick my heaven and earth back up this morning. I thought it was a little too heavy <laughs> for a morning project, so I'm working on Fear Not. I'm stitching a green hill. <laughs> I didn't show you a starting point, but it looked pretty much the same. I <laughs> just added more green. <laughs> I can also show you a couple little things that Trisha gave me that I've been using. She gave me this heart needle minder with a button on back. Did you make this one? She made it. It goes especially well on my green flippets that I worked on earlier. I enjoyed having it on that project. I'll probably put it back there when I get home. She also gave me this little coin purse that is perfect for travel orts because it snaps closed and then they can't get out. So I've put all my orts from the weekend in there. And also this little guy, which is magnetic. Can you open that for me? Because I have one it's a hand. Two handed operation. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. It's magnetic, and she said it's great for holding needle minders or needles or any other tool that you want to take with you for stitching on the go. Where did you get this thing? Joanne's. From Joanne's. Yep. It's a sewing item. Good find. That's going to be about it for the weekend. I'll work a little more on this grass, but I probably won't update again until I get home. So, Hey everyone, I'm back home and I've settled into the house again after a pretty wild weekend. I've actually already been to work 
uh, and come back again as well. So uh, I thought I would take a second now that I'm back to show you in a little more detail everything that I got at the retreat. Um, I showed you the mirabilias that I won in the auction already, but I also picked up a couple things on the trash treasure table and I thought you might be interested to see the mirabilia materials more close up. So I have those things laid out here for you. It's a beautiful day in San Antonio. 72 degrees is the high. My kitty cat is enjoying the view of the outdoors. A lot of times birds sit in the tree just out there and she chirps at them. All right, so on to the treasures <laughs> um, laid out here is everything that I got, not including the floss boxes. I already had those. Um, so I'll run really quick through it for you. Um, this top row of mirabilias are the ones that I purchased. Um, I'll just show you really quick one more time. This is South Seas Mermaid. This um, Shimmering Mermaid. Don't think I mentioned her name when I showed you earlier. This is Circle of Friends. This is the one I'm most excited about. And the beads that came with them. Um, this is Gypsy Mermaid in her bead pack as well. And August Peridot Fairy. And her materials. Um, I also picked up two more mirabilias. Um, these actually were on the treasure, treasure table. So I didn't pay for these. They were free. Um, which is pretty amazing. Uh, I did look at the charts and neither of them have been marked at all. Um, this is Mermaid of Atlantis. I know you guys have seen this one a couple different places. She's a pretty popular design. And this one is called Fairy Ideal. And I actually had never seen this one before. It's kind of an intriguing design though. You've got a fairy sitting on her bed, holding a bird. There's a kind of a weird bunny rabbit statue next to her. And a chandelier overhead. This one is really extravagant. Uh, and I was intrigued by it. I haven't seen anyone else stitch this, although I'm sure some of you guys have probably, so you should let me know in the comments if you've seen who else you've seen doing this one. It's very ideal. This is an older one, copyright ninety-six. Uh very ideal also came with two water lilies. Um, this purple one, which is called Amethyst. This is Silk Thread, for those of you who don't know. Also said uh, on the other water lilies that the dyes are color fast, although you should be sure to test reds and dark colors. So. I didn't know that about Karen Water Lilies. But yeah, Amethyst, and then this one's called Java. It's like a brown with purples in it. That's pretty cool. And these other water lilies go with Gypsy Mermaid. Um, Fairy Ideal also had a um, whisper thread. She calls for a whisper thread, and that was in the pack with her on the trash or treasure table, but I left it there because it was very matted and old, and I thought to myself, if I stitch her, I'd rather get a new whisper thread that's fluffy and pretty. So 
I didn't pick up the whisper thread. But here are the water lilies that go with Gypsy Mermaid. You've got Moon Glow. This one's beautiful pearly colors. White with some light pastel. This one is Mediterranean. Beautiful vibrant blues. This pink one is called African Sunset. These are showing up very true to color, in my opinion. Then Bermuda Reef is the teal. The red is bittersweet. And the yellow daffodil. So yeah, those those can get expensive. Uh, I'm Lucy very happy to pick those up with the Gypsy Mermaid in the auction. Uh, and then a couple of Krennix. Um, two of these were for Circle of Friends, I think. And then the rest go with Gypsy Mermaid. This is, let's see, 850 and 102C. These are both number four braid. They all might be number four. Uh, yeah, then we've got 152V, 014HL, that's a high, that stands for high luster, high shine, 202HL, and 031, and that says 029. I can't get it to focus. Here it goes. Yeah, those are all number four braid as well. I've never stitched with Krennic before. I have one project that was my uh, angel ornament that got destroyed by my cat. And uh, I actually substituted out the, the Krennic for Petite Treasure Braid. Um, moving over here, uh, this is a fabric I picked up. This lamb's wool linen actually was one of the trash to treasure items that Trisha brought and she gave me first dibs and I took that. Uh, she said she prefers to stitch on even weave, not so much linen, so she was getting rid of that. And she also was, she brought a chart for trash to treasure, this one, called an apple a day from Plum Pudding Needle Art. So I took that off her too. Uh, and then these fabrics were ones that came with the Mirabilia, so um, this brown one came with Circle of Friends, and that is called Coffee Bean, it's a 32 count linen from Witch Alt. Um, and then these others are both linen as well. Let me see, one of them is Laurel. The other one is Stony Point. No, that's the alternate, sorry. Amsterdam Blue from Zweigart. So I think this one is the Amsterdam Blue and this one is Laurel. Yeah. Not 100% positive about that. I didn't bother labeling them before taking them away from their projects. Because uh, I think I likely wouldn't use these for those mirrors anyway. I'd probably substitute with hand dyed. I haven't decided yet about Circle of Friends if I'll use the brown or not. We'll see. I did recently obtain a fabric from one of the C fabrics. Because I joined her Fabric of the Month Club. This I didn't get at the retreat, but this is from Under the Sea Evergreen. This was um, last month's Fabric of the Month from her, and I thought it might be a nice nice one to do Circle of Friends on. Maybe. Yeah. But I'm sure I'll find another use for this brown. 
uh, even if I don't stitch the Mirabilia on it. Okay, moving on, I picked up these Lizzie Kates on the Trash to Treasure table. There's four of them for the seasons. Uh, they're called button ups. There's winter. You can see that it calls for a button. This this one has a little mouse. Uh, the buttons aren't included with these. I'm guessing someone stitched them and used the buttons and is getting rid of the charts. So I have to get the buttons separately. There's some little flower buttons on this one. Spring. Summer with a B button. And autumn. And that one has some uh, corn down there. So I liked these birdhouses a lot. thought they were cute. Uh, once again, I got Apple a Day from Trisha. She gave me that one. Uh, this Country Cottage Needleworks is a cowboy-themed one. It says, Giddy up horse, time to ride into the Old West countryside where dreams are made and I can be a cowboy living wild and free. Just couldn't pass up a chart that was Country Cottage Needleworks. You guys know I love them. <laughs> These two tiny charts are from Heart and Hand. And I actually passed up the vegetable one on the trash to treasure table before I found the fruits one <laughs> and thought they made an adorable pair. So I went back and grabbed vegetables as well. They're tiny little ones though. Very cute. Then I picked up Surf Life um, from Hands On Design. This is part of the whole series uh, with a beach seam from them. And I've kind of been eyeing them at the LNS lately, but hadn't sprung for them because I don't know when I'd ever stitch them, but since this was free, uh, I picked it up. And then there was also a Christmas design from Marilyn Levitt Emblem, uh, who's the designer for Lavender and Lace. Uh, and I don't care too much about showing the chart on this one because it was actually a free Christmas design. But if you want to download the whole free chart, it is still available online. You can go to the Told in a Garden website, and uh, there's actually a bunch of free charts there um, from her. So I do recommend that you go to this website and check out the freebies. You can pick up this one, which is 2002. It's like a Madonna and Child. I'll insert a picture of someone's finish, that one, so you can see what it actually looks like. But yeah, since there was a print up there of that, I just picked it up because I like it. Make a good ornament. Then finally I got some booklets, um, this one of carousel horses I thought was pretty cool. Uh, there are six designs in here of the horses, and I thought these would look nice on some beautiful colored fabric, uh, but there's, you can see photos of the other designs on the back. This one is maybe my favorite. This one's like a patriotic theme. This one doesn't have a post, which I think is unusual. I would probably add the post if I did her. This one's wearing armor. So those are fun. Um, I got this chart from Rosewood Manor uh, called Come Sit With Us. It says, come sit with us and enjoy the changing seasons. It has quilt blocks on it, which is the reason why I picked it up, because uh, whenever I see quilt blocks, I think of my mother-in-law, and I don't know, maybe she would like this. Since it was free, I just grabbed it. <laughs> uh, then I grabbed this Victorian sewing room chart. Uh, it comes with two designs with like an antique sewing machine and some notions. And the color scheme in these is a little bit dated, but I could certainly play around with that. I thought they were pretty cute. And then finally, this booklet is a nativity chart. This is from Astor Place. Uh, I've been looking for a nativity scene not necessarily cross-stitch, but just like a regular nativity for our house, like a house decoration for Christmas. 
and haven't found one that I really, really like. Um, and so actually, when I picked this up, I thought, I don't know if I'll stitch this like as pictured or as a whole design, but I could maybe break it apart and stitch it in pieces and make them ornaments or tiny little figurines or something. I don't know. I just thought maybe I could do something with it. So I picked that up too. Um, and that's it for my the items that I got for um, the retreat. It's a ton of stuff, isn't it? I'm pretty pleased. I feel like I made off with half the store. Like a bandit. <laughs> I do have a couple of other things to show you really quick that didn't come from the retreat. One of them was that evergreen fabric uh, that I already showed you. And then finally the last thing is I signed up to be uh, automatically sent the charts for the Brooks book stick, stitch along that she's doing this year, which is the princess dress up stitch along. And she's released three charts for that so far. And so I've received all of those. Um, they're like gowns and crowns for fantasy princesses. And she's done uh, Cinderella and Snow White and Belle already. Aren't they gorgeous? A lot of people online are kind of creeped out that they don't have faces, but I don't mind that. I think they're like paper dolls. Um, so I will, I don't care that they don't have faces and I'll still be stitching them without their faces. The focus is on the clothes. That's what Brooke says. And I totally get it. I guess not everyone does. But I haven't started any of these yet. But I think they're just beautiful. Um, I also signed up to receive with them the accessory packs. Which pretty much just contain um, perforated paper if it's used in the design. And then all the beads that you need for the design. So any specialty threads or ribbons, like these ribbons going down the side here, um, or like the Krennic, there's a lot of sparkly Krennic in all of these. Those you have to purchase separately. They don't come in the accessory packs. Just beads and a beading needle and perforated paper. So um, I actually submitted an order on 123Stitch for all of the specialty threads for Cinderella and Snow White, uh, as well as fabrics. Uh, I purchased fabric for Cinderella, and I purchased a potential fabric for Snow White, but I don't know if I will use it or not. I'm not I was only like 70% sure about it, so. I, Brooke said, um, she people were asking her um, what would be a good color to do them all on. Like, if they wanted to stitch all the dresses on the same piece of fabric, what color should they get? And she said, oh, that's silly. They're all such different color palettes. You'll have to just pick a different color fabric for each of them, stitch them separately. Um, so I guess that's what I'll do. Um, but when I got this, this one, the bell design, I thought that just looks perfect on a, a, like sort of a solid light blue. And so I wanted to keep that color, you know, get a, a light blue linen. Uh, these are charted for 28 count, so I will do a 28 count. So I'm going to get light blue for her. And so that gave me the idea to just do all of them on sort of a strong, solid, maybe a little bit bright, primary colored linen, 28 count linen. So I looked for these two and I decided I'm going to do Cinderella on a purple, like a slightly paler purple linen, and I'll do Snow White on a green. Uh, and I ordered uh, a linen called Provence Lavender from Witch Elf and uh, Tropical Green also from Witch Elf. For, for these two. And tropical green I'm not sure about, but we'll see what it actually looks like against all the floss when it gets here. So I do have a backup color from Lakeside Linens in case I really hate tropical green. Uh, so finally the last thing to tell you is that I actually received uh, two of these charts of, for Bell, for Bell only. When I got my package that had the Bell chart and the Bell accessory pack in it, um, there were actually two packages in my mailbox and they were, there was a duplicate of the exact same thing. I messaged Brooke and she said, 
it, oops, it was a mistake. Uh, I asked for instructions on how I should send it back to her, and she said, please don't keep it or pass it on. Double the stitchy fun. So thank you to Brooks Books for accidentally sponsoring my first giveaway on my channel. Uh, I have an extra bell chart as well as an extra bell accessory pack, uh, which is this one. Uh, and I'm going to give it away to one of you. So if you love Belle, if this design appeals to you, um, maybe you aren't signed up for all 12 of these princesses or you don't want to spend the money on doing all 12 of them or you just like Belle the best. Um, if that's you uh, and you want a chance to win this, leave a comment and tell me what fabric you would stitch bell on and of everyone who leaves me uh, that response I'll go through and pick a winner probably about two weeks from now so it's to give everyone time to watch uh, and leave a comment because I know so many of us take a long time to get around to everybody's videos so uh, yeah leave a comment and you'll be entered in the giveaway if you're 18 or if you're under 18, get your parents' permission, please, because uh, I will just message the winner privately and uh, try and exchange information and get your address so I can mail it to you. Um, but, yep. Yeah. So there you go. That's kind of exciting. First giveaway, and I'll be starting these charts. Uh, if not before, then probably I'll start them during Stitch Mania. So... That's all I have to show you. What a way to end a very exciting weekend. Um, until next time, you guys. Happy stitching.